We're going to have a, a small message this morning talking about Mary and Martha. Most of you know this story if you've been around church very long. It's found in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, and I'll just read it real quick. Jesus and his disciples were on their way. He came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. And if you've got a lot of people in your house, you know what that means. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but a few things are needed. Indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Martha was doing a good work. The thing is, Martha thought that Mary should being, be doing what she was doing. Mary, of course, was sitting at the feet of Jesus, which, if you understood, this was very countercultural. It was, for you women, this is a thing that Jesus was saying, women are have importance. Because the feet of Jesus, sitting at the feet of a teacher, was the place of honor. That was considered where the prize student sat. So, basically, Mary, Martha was coming along, doing all her preparation. And she was seeing Mary being the top student and saying, I don't care about what she's doing. She should be helping me. And she not only accused Mary of not caring, but Martha accused Jesus don't you care, my Lord? Don't you care? And I think that's where she really got in trouble. Because she was doing a good thing. She just didn't think that God was caring because things weren't going as she thought they should. And Jesus said, you're worried about a lot, which brings us to our scripture in Matthew. It says, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you shall eat or drink, What's your, what about your body? What you will bear? Is not life more than food, the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, one of you, by worry, add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See the, how the flowers of the field gr grow. They do not labor or spin. I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown in the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. Your heavenly eye knows what you need, that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have a worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Worry is us basically saying, God, I don't think you care enough. Because Jesus has said, he's going to take care of us. He says, I'm going to take you through whatever you're facing. When we worry, we're basically like Martha saying, Jesus, don't you care? And we know God does care. See, Mary was exactly where she was supposed to be. Martha think, thought she knew better. And usually that's what's going up between us and God. We think we know better. And because it's not going the way we think it should, all of a sudden we look at God and say, God, don't you care? But if Jesus is our master, which is what we talked about last week, he will take care of us. So we need to trust him. Told you I wasn't going to talk long today. <laughs> Trust Jesus. Don't worry. He's the one we've chosen to be our master. And you know what? If we read the scripture. He's got this. And now I'm going to give it to Judy. And I remember the name. <laughs>
come back. It's been too many years. He's just left you here in misery to die. You old liar. You just go away. Go hide and hold your ears. Soon the drop of God will sound and split the sky. Well, I'm living ready, but I'm working hard. Satan's prowling to and fro in my backyard. Jesus said that he'd return when old Gabriel blows his horn. So I'm living ready, but I'm working hard. Yes, I'm living ready, but I'm working hard. Satan's proud to and fro in my backyard. Jesus said that he'd return when old Gabriel blows his horn. So I'm living ready, but I'm working hard. Yes, I'm living ready, but I'm working hard. And good morning. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, as Mr. Rogers is wont to say. And uh, this is my neighborhood. When I grew up, kind of, I lived out about two and a half miles from here, but uh, uh, I remember attending Cub Scout meetings in the basement and all kinds of stuff here in this building. And there used to be a building adjacent to this one that uh, we went to school in. Uh, who knew, you know? But uh, so it's, it brings back lots of memories, which is a danger to you. Uh, stories. I, I tend to get off on rabbit trail stories of stuff that happened many moons ago. Because for some reason, I remember the things that happened many moons ago rather than the most recent moon. You know, and so it's, it's kind of challenging that way. But some of you may relate to that. And if you don't yet, you will, uh, if you live long enough. So uh, anyway, we're, we're glad to be here. We're glad to be here. And Dana was hoping to be here this morning, and, and she wasn't able to. So I, I'm, I'm missing her, and some of you are too, I'm sure. But uh, we opened with a song that I wrote several years ago. Uh, it was based on a, a book that I read, a little booklet, 88 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming Back in 1988. It was a big seller that year, dropped off some in 89, but uh, it was quite, quite the deal. But uh, that was what motivated me to write the song, uh, and it's called Live It Ready, but Working Hard. We don't know when he's coming back. I'll, I'll give you a clue, by the way. When somebody, like the guy that wrote that book, said that he knows exactly when Jesus is coming back, because he said September 12th at noon. I mean, it's pretty precise. I don't remember that he said which time zone, though. But anyway, uh, if they say they know, don't worry about it. For two reasons. One, <laughs> he might come before then. Uh, and secondly, they obviously don't know because Jesus said no man knows. Uh, but he did say 
to quote a movie phrase, I'll be back. And, uh, and he will. And he will. So we may get to experience it in our lifetime or not. It's immaterial, really. Uh, but uh, the signs are pointing in that direction for sure. Uh, we look for big things to happen. And God says, not always. Not always. Here's another song that I wrote. There are times when I come to the throne of God With a mighty problem or two And I lay out all the plans I've made Telling God what He ought to do if you just do this and thus and so, it will work out, you will see. Then he speaks to me in that still small voice, saying, Son, listen to me. Who made the mountains? Who made the streets? Who healed the blind man and called the sea? things I have done, but you will see that the greatest ones there are, my friend, are the little things I've done for thee. It was just a staff for Moses that he held out over the sea. Only one little stone in a slingshot brought to David victory. Just a manger in a stable held my son, the King of Kings. If you come to me for help, my friend, look around for the little things. Who made the mountains? Who made the trees? Who healed the blind man and calmed the sea? wonderful things I have done, but you will see that the greatest ones there are, my friend, are the little things I've done for thee. Tis a grain of sand in an oyster that becomes the pearl so rare. There are tiny bits in my life that he places with great care. Now I know in the little things and he's slowly changing me I'm no longer Satan's slave praise God and now am free who made the mountains who made the trees who healed the blind man and called the seas there are many great and wonderful things I have done you will see that the greatest ones there are, my friend, are the little things I've done for thee. They're the little things. Yes, the little things. They're the little things I've done for Technology. I love it and I hate it. It's what you call a love hate relationship, you know? Computers. I've got this thing right here, you know? I can take pictures with it, I can take videos with it, I can watch movies on it, I can send a text file, I can, you know, do a text file and I can send it to a printer and it'll print it out. It just does amazing things. I can ask it things. I can find a scripture quicker with this than I can with a concordance. It's amazing. And you know what else I can do with this? I can actually make a phone call. <laughs> Who knew, you know? But uh, yeah, oh, and it just vibrated. I wonder what, who's trying to tell me what. Well, anyway, uh, technology. When we first started traveling, well, this next year marks the 50th anniversary of our traveling music ministry. Okay, we've been at it a week or two, and uh, or three, 
And when we first started traveling, we played our tracks on Haven's folks had an old wall on sack reel to reel recorder. Some of you may remember those. And then we got moved ahead and we moved to cassettes. And then we went back to reel to reel with a more sophisticated than the old wallet sack reel to reel player. And then we moved to digital audio tape, that machine. And then we moved from that to mini discs. We moved from that to CDs. And then we move from that to my computer, and now we're using, I think they call it an iPad. You know? Amazing. When we started out, we made records. Some of you remember those. About this big around, they got a hole in the middle, and they were really groovy, you know. They, they didn't. <clears throat> and then we had eight tracks. Now, you younger ones, you can go look it up, Google it. Okay, you, you'll find 8-tracks. And we, we actually sold 8-tracks of our albums, but we didn't even have an 8-track player. We've never had an 8-track player, even in our car or nothing. Uh, and then, and then we, we, we made cassettes of our albums. And then we made CDs of our albums. And now you can't even buy a new car with a CD player in it. And so now, are you ready for this? I know this looks like a cassette case. It's not. See that little thing? You can plug that into some cars. You can plug it into your computer. You can plug it into some TVs. It has all 99 of the songs that we've recorded over the years. In that little chewing gum size piece. I don't know if they even make chewing gum that size anymore. But anyway, uh, and, and some people call them thumb drives, some people call them flash drives, uh, USB drives, but anyway, that's what it is. And we've been, we, we just did this this week. We're, we're right uptown. <laughs> we just got, got, and you drop it and it doesn't break. That's right. You might lose it, but uh... yeah, you, you won't break it. So anyway, we, we have these available, and we do have the CDs out there too. But... Uh, for those of you who still have CD players, but uh, with all 99, of all of our recordings are right there in that little thing. So it, it's kind of cool. Uh, you, you'll enjoy that uh, if you if you like our music, and if you don't, then you don't get one. I mean, what can I say? You know. <laughs> but uh, we have we have a lot of fun with it, and we've been enjoying it over the years. And Dana, as as I think she said, Dana sang sings. Uh, she was the real songbird. But you've heard of family planning? Mom had four kids. A soprano, a tenor, an alto, and a bass. Now how much more family planning can you get than that, you know? But uh, so, <clears throat> but anyway, we're going to go back and do another song that, uh, that I wrote uh, a few years back. And here we go, I think. Oh, that's because I didn't do that, but I can do this, and that will work. Technology. I love it, and I hate it, but anyway. <laughs> Keep the main thing, the main thing as you go. 
Thank you for being here today. We've enjoyed it. Um, I, I know my wife was like, this is really good. I like this. We got funny $45 to get that 99. I said, talk to the accountant. <laughs> but um, as we go out today, there will be a, there's a basket back there. I want you all to do what you do. Bless this couple. Uh, we're not going to put a to have somebody standing over with a plate today, but we do want you to faithfully give to bless these that come out. Um, and I know you will because I know you. So, but let's commit this time to God and commit them to God. Dear Father, I thank you for this time, for our ability to worship you. And Lord, I ask now as we prepare to leave this place that God, you would be with each one here Lord, as we prepare to, to have this offering that's going to be given, that, Lord, you would give it in abundance to bless Ron and Haven. And, Father, we ask you to watch over them, continue to bless them in their ministry and the paths they take. God, be with them in a mighty way. And, Lord, help all of us listen to your word and listen to your voice as we go forth. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.